<clears throat> Where do you start with this story? It started actually as a school bus driver in 1981. I was 18 years old, um, which theoretically you could get your license at the age to drive a school bus. But I was always fascinated with the school bus. So as soon as I could get behind the wheel, I got behind the wheel, okay, and started driving one. I like riding one, so I wanted to drive one. But I wanted to be very successful financially in life too. So just driving the bus wasn't enough for me. Okay, I could own some of these, okay, and maybe make this work. My name is Tim Christ. I'm the president of Christ Transportation Incorporated, and uh, our company's based out of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. And in 1990, I was awarded my first big contract. Uh, we grew overnight to 60 buses. From 1990 to 2004, um, we grew the company up to 500 buses, and at that point in time, we sold to uh, Student Transportation of America. And in 2015, uh, we parted ways, uh, and I did not compete for one year. I bought a supermarket in our local hometown. And in 2016, there was an opportunity here that was presented to me from one of the vendors servicing the store. And we jumped right back in again with zero buses. We grew the company up over 300 buses again. Very simple philosophy, three words, people, service, profit. Hire good people, take care of those people. They'll give good service. You don't have to look at the financial statements because the numbers are going to be there. So, but the key factor in that is people. And that's how, you know, Tim kind of got back in and then David White got involved, who I worked with before. And he goes, what do you think about coming back in I said, well, you know, I've been thinking about it, but I give me a couple weeks and I'll let you know. I wasn't looking to get into the school bus business again, you know, but I got to know a lot of people in the industry, including uh, Pete Pearson. And he called me and said, you know, I've been talking with Tim Price. I think he would be interested in doing a deal because he's growing really fast and he needs access to capital. Pardon the pun, access. Um, <laughs> Long story longer, we said, great, we brought Tim Kreiss uh, and Pete Pearson to Baltimore, and we sat down and met with uh, Kevin and Steve and the gang. You know, I was impressed with the organization, uh, what they believed in, the, the philosophy, uh, their approach to business and growth, and um, it's something that was very appealing to me. I could still stay involved, okay, still help them grow this company, still keep the name out there, if you will, and um, still, at the same time, had strong backing, not only um, as far as their support structure, but also financially. If you look at Christ Transportation, one of the things that's attractive about what Tim Christ does is his focus is very much on how do I partnership with that school district. We've got to do something to make it a lot more interesting and make those jobs something that would challenge people who want to be in those positions because it's a mission-driven business. And you're providing children access to education and able to get to school and some, in some cases even to the point where they get their first meal that day by going to school. It's not just about making money, although it's a good business and we can make a return. And so if we don't change the old ways and start looking at this, how we transform it and attract talent, the industry is just going to stagnate. And I think that's where Access really kind of challenged, how do you transform an old industry? So we created an umbrella company and we named it American Student Transportation Partners. And in that partnership comes the trust and allows us to work with them on efficiencies. We get something out of that and they get something out of it. There's a reward for both of us on each side by doing that. Because at the end of the day, the most important thing is getting kids to school on time and safely. We have no idea what these kids are going through today, particularly in this environment and they need to smile and say good morning and smile and say good afternoon as hard as that can be when they're fighting each other coming up the stairwell because that may be the only smile and the only good morning or good afternoon they get. You know, we will support those drivers because they are our people and they're out there representing us. So we need them more than ever and we need them to do a good job because we're trying to build a culture as well that people want to work for you. Don't treat them like a number. Treat them like a person. Treat them the way you want to be treated. And I honestly think that's why we are successful and why people want to work for us, because we do have that reputation. We believe in morale. We, as management, none of us matter if we don't have drivers. So, I mean, it is a very rewarding job, and sometimes you don't realize the impact. And we've had kids come up to us already that said, you know, thanks for taking an interest in me, because I don't know where I'd be if you wouldn't have. So, I mean, that goes a long way. That's more than any, that anybody can pay you. It, it's just 
what we do because we're a family. A school busing can be very rewarding. Um, you get attached to those kids you transport. They look at you first time in the morning, you know, they establish that relationship and that they're a factor in those children's lives. I take pride in that. I know our drivers take pride in that. You know, I know Access takes pride in that.